Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, my day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell uh, in Westboro, but this is not about my day job. This is about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've, if you've seen my presentations before, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard, which means if you identify with them, you want to know what the programs are and who the people are who you need to know if that's exactly what you want to do. This program is really important for you if you are in this kind of situation, especially if you're starting to have some memory problems or if you are um, a loved one, and especially a person you're caring for, has, is having some memory problems. Because it happens that Hudson is the place for two, of, for two of the greatest programs to deal with some of these issues if you want to stay home. And as it happens, there's one woman, this woman, Lisa Gardner, who works at both of them. Um, she works uh, at the Daybreak, the so-called Daybreak program in Hudson, and she's going to talk about, a little bit about that. But she also works uh, at Better Day, which is this wonderful social day model program that is also located uh, in Hudson on, uh, on Reservoir Street. So thank you both very much for, for coming on, um, Regina Wolf Fritz uh, and Lisa Gardner. So what I want to do, as I mentioned, Lisa, if, if you wouldn't mind, is I'd like to start by talking about the program at Better Day, right? And the folks who come to Better Day, right, and who you know kind of came and are coming, not and not you know in particular, but kind of who they are, what you know what their kind of needs are, and why they're at Better Day, and then talk about how that program runs, you know, and its connection between among Hudson and, and Northboro and uh, Marlboro, right? Yes. And then let's segue into what is. Uh, it, 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 um, I'm sorry, it, I just, did I say Better Day? I meant Daybreak. I met Daybreak, and then let's segue into what happens at Better Day, okay? Okay. So first of all, a couple of words about you. So who are you? Are you, are you, and how did you end up doing this kind of work? Um, I, my name again is Lisa Gardner, and I live actually in Northboro, and um, I am, I was very good friends with my neighbor, who's not my neighbor now, but we're still friends, Tammy Pazaricki, who yeah. created Pleasantries, which is now Better Day. Um, she started that program. I believe we've been on that site 12 years. Yeah. Thir oh, thir wow. yeah, 13. Was... Where are we at? <laughs> 14. I, I try to remember off the top of my head. Yeah. And um, she just, she hired me to start working at Pleasantries. Um, and I, I loved it. I've always enjoyed um, seniors. I had a close relationship with my own grandparents and she always presented it as, you know, like you were spending time with your own grandparents and it always had such a warm feel. And when Janice Long at the Hudson Senior Center wanted to create a program at the Hudson Senior Center for folks that were living with dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, um, she actually spoke with Tammy and Janice wrote up a grant and created the Daybreak program. And I was one of the people, Tammy sent me there to work once a, once a month. There was several of us sharing the duties of facilitating. Mm -hmm. And when the time came, Janice didn't want to rotate facilitators anymore. She wanted to hire someone permanently and she asked if I wanted the job and I said, sure. So every Thursday morning, 1130, I am at the Hudson Senior Center um, there till 230 with the Daybreak program. And so it's 1130 to 230. And, and talk to us about who, you know, who's there and what happens from 11 to 230. So um, my group is mainly folks that, are, that have dementia, Alzheimer's. I've had Parkinson's, um, stroke. Um, brain tumors, usually yeah. someone that's had some sort of cognitive issue that needs, um, their caregivers need a break. It's, it's the same thing at Better Day. Their caregivers need a little bit of a break. And I always look at Better Day as it gets, usually these folks have never sought out help before, no relief. And it's kind of a first step. Right. And it's just for three hours. Um, and again, we originally started just in Hudson. And about four years ago, we were able to expand it. And we offer it 
um, on Tuesdays in Northborough and Wednesdays in Marlboro. Same thing, 11.30 to 2.30. And it allows people, they can, if they want to sign up for all three locations, they can, but it gives them a few hours of a break. And I've had folks that do better day and day break. Um, they'll do both. It, they're actually, I always look at them as complementing each other. And, and do, do you actually work in the other on the, in the other two senior centers in the day break program? Or does Part, do those? Currently right now, I, we had, because I work at Better Day, I could yeah. not work at the other two locations. Yeah. Um, and so we had hired someone, my yeah. Co former coworker has just left though. She took another job yeah. and um, I'm, we are now currently looking to hire someone to facilitate the program in Northborough and Marlboro. However, right now I am also in Northboro. I'm so, busy so, and so yeah. tell me, tell us, tell folks kind of what happens, what happens from two thirty from 1130 to two thirty. So the folks arrive and usually when they come in, we just sort of chit chat. How was your week? How's your weekend? I, you know, get caught up. How are the grandkids? That kind of thing. Sometimes I'll put out uh, word searches and maybe a coloring sheet if someone just wants to relax and do that. We have lunch um, anywhere between 12 and 1230. We have lunch together. If you come to Hudson, the lunch is provided by Meals on Wheels. Um, the same thing for Marlboro, but in Northboro, they've got that wonderful bistro and we get our lunch there, which is really nice. And, um, and then we just do, we'll play games. I do trivia, I do word games, I do exercises with them. Um, we just try to have fun, try to laugh. It's very social. People make friends. Um, I've got folks that maybe do multiple locations and they become friends with these people that they see all the time. Right, right. So it, I, it's I think, a very nice program. I think one of the one of the th things that is always, I find a challenge, because of course I got a lot of clients who are dealing with these issues, you know, who are dealing with, they've got memory problems, they're taking care of someone who's got memory problems, but there's such a tendency to feel so protective of the person who has a memory problem that you don't want them to talk to anybody else because it's like oh they're going to be embarrassed you know but the nice thing about this program is that everybody there has got a memory problem and so it isn't it it's like it's you can talk you can you can kind of joke about that it's not like an embarrassment which is just a it's such a huge just a relief both for the caregiver and for the person who has got the memory issues that you can be in this environment that isn't embarrassing. You know? It's not, it, it is, it's because everyone there understands. And so they can really be themselves. They're not in a social situation where um, there might be people around them that don't understand what's going on. They're with people that know. I have one gentleman every time will say to me, well, you know, I have dementia, so I don't know that answer. <laughs> <laughs> every day i'm like it's okay i get it he's, he's very funny he does it every week right that's right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that that's that's terrific and and have you found you've been doing this for a long time now right so people obviously yeah. come and go do you how long um how long have some people been there is there anybody who has been there you know are um, they typically there for a few months are they typically does it or does it really vary all over the place it varies a little bit at daybreak. Um, I've got some folks now that have been with me for at least three years. I've got one gentleman um, yeah. that had had a stroke. Um, probably, I don't know how much he needs us now, but I think he just enjoys coming. <laughs> and um, yeah, but I, it depends. I, I've had some folks that were with me for four years. Um, so it just, it kind of depends. Usually it's about, I think on average a year and a half to two years. So you're really making though, kind of like some long-term friends and relationships. In I do. Yeah. You, you definitely get, and I know Regina can speak to this because it's the same thing at better day. You get close to these families, you get attached to these families uh, in some ways. So, um, right. yeah becomes a family. So yeah. that's, I guess that that's a good segue to just talk about about better day. So so Regina, 
kind of can can you I know that you've been on my show before, but for folks who haven't seen you, can you just give us a little background of how you how you ended up being involved at Better Day, and then you know if if you and 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 Lisa can kind of talk about you know who who is at who is at Better Day and how all of that works, that would be really helpful. Great, thanks Arthur for having us. My name is Regina Wolfritz, and I'm the director at Better Day. I have been for the last two de- two years, and I've my way was not a straight straight direct way to to get to adult day programs. Um, I way back I have a background in horticulture, and through that I've worked with families in an educational setting on on a farm on a local farm nearby, and that really um, that brought out my love to work with families raising children, being the village that they're looking for. And at the same time, just like Lisa, I realized I really enjoy being with seniors. And then there's a lot of dementia in my family, loved hanging out with all my family members. So I actually decided in 2013, I went back to school to get a master's degree in elder care management. And to that, uh, those studies brought me to Tammy because I did my internship with her. And she was exactly, I couldn't believe it when I found her place because this was literally my dream come true, a home setting, a really small scale home setting uh, for people with memory impairments where they can meet and uh, just be relaxed and at the same time provide this incredible support system for the families, for the family caregivers. So this is how I came to Pleasantries. And then um, in 2020, Um, I took over the business from Josh Obeder, who had purchased it in between, and we turned it into a non-profit organization um, with a wonderful board, where Arthur is a board member. I was just going to say, full full disclosure, (laughs) I'm on this board. I I really love this board. (laughs) And uh, the pay is tremendous. We just get it from (laughs) We try our best, Arthur. So this is how I came to Better Day. uh, But we continue what Tammy started so beautifully in 2008. Um, we just, um, same mission, same um, idea to provide a really comfortable, safe space for people with memory impairment where they can just be relaxed and be at their best. And so, and so your, 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 the program at Better Day, can you just talk about that, about, because, you know, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm aware of it, but can you just talk about, you know, when, when people can come, because I know that there's a full day option at Better Day as well as yeah. as well as partial days. And can you you know talk about who tends to be at Better Day, even compared to the conversation to what Lisa was talking about at uh, at uh, Daybreak? Yes. Uh, and and then and then just talk about how a day how a day works. So actually, it's a pretty good start. How Lisa described her Daybreak program, we are pretty much like a more extensive program like that. We are open Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 4.30. So families have the option to have their loved ones stay with us for an eight hour day, which gives, we have a mix of families. We have some um, spouses, partners that are caregivers for their partner or adult children. And some of them do need the eight hour day because they go to work. Others are way happier with a shorter day um, because all they need is some extended respite. So we have the option for guests to attend either from 8.30 to 4.30 for an eight hour day or for a somewhat shortened day from 10 o'clock in the morning till 4.30. I see, I see. Oh, and, 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 and by the way, I know that Lisa had mentioned this, you know, and, and now you're mentioning it that for a lot of folks, this for the caregivers, it provides a break. So do any of the caregivers ever stay during, the, during this, this time period? Um, it's yes and no. Most people really drop off. We sometimes have events where we love family members to be in. I have to say COVID really, uh, threw a, threw us some challenges there because we have had to keep our group for such a long time to as small as possible. Uh, but we do have, we do have sometimes family members join at the end of the day, whether it's for a snack time, for a trivia, for a word game, um, uh, or sometimes we have family members that um, have interesting jobs or share, share some of their life um, stories yeah. with us and come in for a visit. But in general, I have to say, I think they all use the time to do all the things that come to short and really to take care of themselves. Which and, is and, and Lisa, from your perspective, because you're kind of doing this kind of directly, 
Can you just kind of talk about the day, talk about how that how the day runs? Because it's obviously it's 8.30 to 4.30. There must be some food in there somewhere. But other, <laughs> other, other, but other than that, kind of what 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 happens? Well, we uh, if they come at 8.30, they have breakfast with us. So we got we've got a few people that are coming in. We sit down and have a breakfast together and it's just like having going over to a friend's for coffee. I like to think of it. We just sit around the table. We'll talk about the Celtics or anything else that's going on. Um, and then about 10 o'clock, the rest of our, the, the half day guests start coming in. And so our morning is, you know, we try to do some exercises after breakfast. Um, we have a wonderful, wonderful program director right now. Um, Nancy Johnson, who really, really has, um, so much to the table for us with regards to our programming. And so sometimes we'll do art appreciation or um, talk about inventors or anything. She, she comes up with some creative things for us to do. We get, we, um, we used to do all of our cooking. We still do a little bit of cooking, but we have to say that Asabet, the kids over at Asabet have been providing us with lunches three days a week. We're going to miss them when they go on, on summer vacation, <laughs> right. Right? right? Regina, we're going to miss them. Yes, we are going to miss them. It's yeah. wonderful. It's a wonderful, wonderful cooperation with them. Uh, and it's a four minute, it's literally a couple of minutes car ride. So one of us just scoots over. Um, and lately they've actually been, gotten very creative, putting together very creative menus for us. And um, it's wonderful. Yeah, That's great. That's great. And, and, and by the way, I'm, I'm sorry. By the way, to the two of you, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't ask. So, how, how many people tend to be there? How many people are at Better Day? And and as you say, it you, you, from what the way you describe it, it change it may change during the course of the day, right? Because some some new people may arrive. But but kind of in general, how many people are there? And is there a kind of a maximum number of people that you want to see? Right, right now there are third. I can tell right now we have thirteen guests at Better Day right now, and uh, our numbers have been going up nicely, steadily, and uh, we are now at twelve to fourteen guests every day, and uh, fourteen is is our max, pretty much. I see. I just see. Just from yeah. the just from the the space in the house, uh, what we can provide. Right, and, and and I guess for the for the folks who are listening, who are watching. You, you may just want to, if you're ever, if you're interested in this, right, because you've got a, someone that you love who, you know, may may need this at some point, you may just kind of want to stop by because it's it, it's, a, it's a converted, it's a single family house in a single family neighborhood close to Fort Meadow. And and so, to, you know, to get a, so, so the numbers of people that they're talking about, it's not a huge number, but it, but it, it kind of comfortably fits inside of that space, right? Yes. So, so, um, so, go back, back to you, Lisa. So you, you know, you've done some things in the morning, and now do, you, and now the, the, the lunch shows up, right? And then, kind of, then, then what? Well, we we eat our meals together. So when I talk about breakfast, we sit and eat with them or have coffee with them. At lunchtime, we all sit together. So we're not the the staff doesn't go off somewhere and have lunch on their own. We are all together. We eat lunch with them. We have beautiful outdoor space and um and since regina's come on it's even more beautiful <laughs> um we've got a fenced in yard that we make use of a deck we have access to the lake so we will a lot of times now that the weather's nice we've got our chairs down there we can go down and sit by the water um we've got beautiful gardens and this year we've changed it around a little bit we've got some more um standing garden boxes i don't mm -hmm. raised that will be, beds. Yep. thank you raised beds <laughs> gina knows this better than me and um it that you know so that everyone can participate in the garden area i mean it just it it's it really is lovely if someone just wants to go out into the yard and just walk around on their own they can do it safely. You know, we're, we're there and we're watching them, but we don't have to hover over them. They, right. they have a sense of, there is a sense that they're not constantly being told what to do and that they have a little bit of freedom that if they just want to walk outside, they can. 
which is a, a wonderful thing. All, yeah. all, although once again, the areas are all fenced now, right? So it is all fenced in. So it's very safe. We've got a beautiful, beautiful, all fenced in area. It's all closed off. And we, uh, Regina had them create these lovely walking paths. So it just makes like a little figure eight and you'd be surprised. You'd think <laughs> it's small. Well, they like it and they love it. They love to just go out there and walk along the little path. Right. Right. Because it's like meditation, you know? Yeah. Like, right. And and you said that you, 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 there, there is, there are chairs along the beach, but you're not right on the beach. Right. So you just, you, are, you have access to it. So that for folks who are concerned, oh my God, they're right on the water. You know, is this safe? Yes. Right. We're not, we're not right on the beach. We have access so we can just walk down to our access point. Um, we have a little bit of a view from our sunroom. So we can actually look out at the water, which is really nice. But where our yard and everything is all completely fenced in, it's all locked off. So you can't leave the property without, you know, one of us going with you and opening up the gates. And um, and so when we do go down, we all go together and we sit yeah. and then we all come back together. And and is that does that typically does the outdoor part tend to happen in the afternoon or is that? Or does that really vary by day? How does all of that work? I, I think it varies by day and weather. Yes. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yes, we switch it really around, Arthur. Like depending on the heat, if we get into the real, real hot summer weather, then we are we spend most of the mornings outside. Uh, we have love the deck is in the shade, or we go to the beach, which is in the shade, um, and then over the mid midday heat, we stay inside. And then venture out again once it hits like three o'clock, four o'clock, and we have some more shaded areas. So we, you can see us scooting from shade to shade yeah. and finding the comfortable spots. Um, but we certainly haven't, I mean, and I'm an outdoor person, but I have to say, the staff is unbelievable. <laughs> and our guests too, they seek the outdoors. And, uh, and I think what Lisa mentioned is the most lovely piece is the independence that uh, the fence has created because we have people who seek some quiet uh, underneath the dogwood tree um, by themselves and they can do so. Or we just have a couple of people that play some horseshoe. Or the latest thing is they got into the just tossing the ball, the baseball. And it's it's wonderful. A couple of people can do that while the rest of the group does something completely right. different. Right. So can we just talk a little bit about co cost? So Lisa, can you just talk about that? You know, do you know what 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 does Daybreak cost folks when they so when they're going to these senior centers? Sure. So the Daybreak program from the beginning has been funded through various grants. Um, our original grant was through the Older Americans Act, which uh, we, we got or we applied for through Bay Path. And then Metro West Health Foundation um, for the last several years had been funding us with one of their grants. Uh, going forward, our new grant will be back to our old grant, which was the Older Americans Act. Um, through Bay Path. So having the grant helps us keep our costs um, pretty low. Right now, it's a $15 voluntary contribution. Um, and the idea was that for folks that really, really cannot afford much else, that this bare minimum of a few hours a week would at least give them a place to go. It's so really I, yeah. yeah, I know, ne I never know who has voluntary donated or not that's not you know i don't know who does or doesn't any money that we get we just we use to help make the program better sometimes i can get an entertainer um sometimes i'll get a fun lunch like we'll get you know pizza or something so it does help us with some extras right now regina talk about talk a little bit about about the cost there yes the payment structure is very different at better day uh we are private nonprofit. Um, so the day, the full day, the eight hour day is $150 per person that includes the breakfast, lunch, and afternoon snack. The six and a half hour day is $135 per day. Uh, that includes the lunch and afternoon snack. Um, since we've turned nonprofit though, there are new ways for us to offer financial assistance for that as well. And I would like people to know about that. So one through a Cummings Foundation grant, we have some um, funds for financial assistance that can reduce dependent on 
the guest income, yearly income, can reduce program fees to up to 50%. And so um, I guess and, I, I guess what I would what I would suggest to folks, I'm just I'm watching the time because I my job is always to kind of um, kind of just pay attention because otherwise we I tend to we, I tend to wander off, you know. Um, but I guess what I would really, really encourage folks to do is if you're, if you're having memory problems or you know someone who has memory problems, whether you're the caregiver or not, you know, check these programs out. Just check them out, you know, and, and, and st don't, don't be overcome by the fear mm -hmm. that, oh, my God, you know, this person has dementia and they're not going to be comfortable and all of it. Check it out so that you can see what these people are going through right you know going through right now how the program works go to one of the daybreak programs you know there, there are three it's it's actually been a wonderful thing to see three senior center directors get along so well they re really coordinating the program among the three communities and then, and then stop by daybreak stop by daybreak and don't i want to say don't say no to yourself right don't assume that you can't afford this or that you know because mm -hmm. you don't necessarily have to be doing this every single day it to the and, and and especially to the extent that you're the caregiver i always tell caregivers you know the worst thing that you can do for the person you're taking care of is drop dead because then everything gets really bad you can't burn yourself out right so that to the extent that you know, you, you're just feeling frazzled. You're, this is a 24 seven job and you're feeling like you need a break, maybe not every day, but that you need a break. Look at these programs as a, a way that can, that can help the person you're caring for while at the same time helping yourself, which is just like a big deal. So uh, Lisa Gardner, thank you so much for coming on and for giving us a perspective of the both programs. Regina, thank you for coming on and just kind of talking about the kind of the totality of that program and also introducing people to the fact that there is some financial assistance that is now available. They shouldn't, once again, automatically say, oh, I could never afford that. They should check it out and then see if it could work. So thank you very much to the both of you. And folks, I, I, uh, I always enjoy these programs. I look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. Thank you very much.